And Aten is a more developer intense version of Zapier, Power Automate, or make.com. It allows you to use nodes to connect to other APIs, just like those other no code softwares use as well. The main difference is it doesn't look linear. It's not like a flow that starts from the top and ends at the bottom. You can move it out these nodes and move them around and make these really intense workflows that have a lot more advanced features than some of the other software applications. So in this video, we're gonna go through the interface of Inaten and then go into the cost how much it costs to have this software. And then there's also desktop, desktop version as well. And then finally, we'll move into other software that I feel like is worth mentioning because it's an alternative to using this software. If you're new here, my name is Liz. I'm a data science manager at Intel, but on the side, I like to film videos about this kind of different software that I come across, kind of unknown. Some of them are more known, some of them are not, and see if they're really worth the hype. So I will purchase it and I will review it so that way you guys don't have to. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually started a free trial. So it says I have 26 days left in my free trial, but you can download the desktop app. We'll talk about the different costs in a second here, but I wanted to try the cloud version first. So this is what it looks like when you sign in. So I signed up, I'm on the free version, whatever. Um, if I wanna go in here, I press open and then it will take me to a list of different workflows. So if I go back to workflows, um, I'm not gonna save, it. it's fine. Um, you'll see different workflows, but the thing is, this is what will pop up when you open your first workflow. So I kind of like it because it has like this grid and you can zoom out as far as you want or zoom in as much as you want, and you can build like these really intense workflows. I really like the look of it. And I will warn you, this is very developer heavy, I would say. So like, I'll show you an example. When you go to connect to this Notion API, you have to actually create a credential for the API, which basically means that you have to go retrieve an API key from Notion. Now, the cool thing is they actually have documentation. So this looks intense. Like if you're looking at this, you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? And you can even look at it at JSON. That's how you pronounce it, JSON. It's really not that complicated. This is just what it, what the code behind an API looks like that what something like Zapier doesn't show you. But um, you basically will read this documentation. So if you click this, it'll take you to the Notion trigger and it will walk you through exactly how to connect it and how to go to Notion to go grab those credentials. And there's just a lot of information. Now, if you're not like developer heavy, this is not a great place to start. You wanna start with Zapier or make.com, but this has a lot more functionality. <clears throat> so I like using it and just don't, it's not as hard as it sounds. It's very basic, very basic code in the background. So essentially you'll create your API connection. You'll get your API key from Notion. And then um, you'll go in here and then you can create every minute or whatever and put your event and then put the ID of your database in Notion in here. So when I was in here, you actually have to go into your settings and then into your connections and then go to develop or manage integrations. And then it'll take you here. And this is where I made my Inaten Notion connection. So you can see this is a connection here. And then once you create this new integration, I'll ask you a couple questions. You'll get your API key. You'll get um, the things you need in order to connect this to Inaten. Now you do have to go back and then share your um, Notion database with this connection. So there's a little bit of a nuance here and I'll go f more into detail in another video. This is just to give you an idea of how this works. So once you have that all done, you can fetch a test event, which is what I did. And that's what this came back as, as JSON. That's typically how you do it if you're gonna connect to APIs. Zapier and uh, make.com, they kind of blanket this so you don't see it. But honestly, if you're gonna play with automations, you might as well learn like the basics of how they work. So once you set that guy up, then you can go and press this plus button and add a bunch of nodes. So like I just typed in ghost, there's all kinds of APIs. You can even go to, um, depending on which ones you want, you can even go to like finance and accounting and you can even link your PayPal account or your QuickBooks account. Like there's some stuff in here that I have not seen on Zapier or make.com. Like some of these are like, wow, that's really intense. 
Um, so you can see all these different APIs that you wouldn't have access to, um, but you do have to do more of a developer role pulling in those API stuff. So same thing with Ghost. Now this is gonna look intense. What's the cool part is, is your inputs. So this right here, you're like, what the heck is that? All I did was just drag and drop this in here. And that's where that name comes from. So it, I need to undo that because there's two of them, but you basically um, drag and drop these in here. So if I have a specific tag, I can put that in my content or drag it up here or wherever I want to put it. The only downside is I haven't been able to find the content within the Notion object in order to pull it into Ghost. So that's kind of disappointing. Haven't been able to figure that one out. But you can see, it's a lot more intense, see all this code and stuff, than, you know, Zapier or make.com. So, or even Power Automate for that, for that instance. And you can see it in a bunch of different ways. I, I like this, I think it's friendly. It's like, it's a mix in between completely hard code, coding it, and developer friendly, almost, low code interaction. So it's, it's a mixture of both. And then what you do is you execute the workflow and you can add more. That's the cool thing is you can just keep adding to it um, and have parallel things running. It's very cool. Right now it's running. So basically what this does um, is when I go to Notion and add a card to my newsletter database, then it will go and execute. So let's do that. So I'm at my newsletter database here, as you can see. Now, if I go to add a new, so let's just call this newsletter test YouTube, because we're on YouTube right now, and we can just tag it as whatever. Um, now I just enter that. So it's going to check every minute for that. So if we go back to our website here, that is active. So it's going to check that. And all we have to do is go to my posts and refresh and we'll see if it pops up. Now it may take a couple minutes, so give it a second, it's not working yet. But the thing is every minute it will check and refresh it and it will add a draft. So you can see I was testing it earlier, <laughs> um, but you basically set it up the same way you have documentation. It's pretty clear to follow. Um, I did do this in Zapier as well, but I, I think it's easier in Zapier, honestly. But the thing is, you can't add any more steps on the free plan with Zapier. So Anaten allows you to test a bunch of different, you know, you can have a lot more steps on your post. So as you can see, bam, we refreshed it. Here it is, newsletter test YouTube right here, which is kind of cool. Now I would love for it to be able to pull in the content from my Notion card, but I haven't figured that one out yet. That might actually be a little bit more intense um, work, but you can see it's kind of nice because if you add one, it'll at least add it here so you can remember to write this. Um, but, so I think it's kind of useful. Um, so, you know, you can play around with it. Very cool stuff. Um, and then let me go all the way back. A lot of tabs open to this uh, trigger here. Now they do have a ton of templates, kind of like when you look at other automation tools, there's a ton of different templates here and some of them are more advanced, some of them are simple, but very cool stuff and they're multi-step. I want to keep getting that point across because you're not just getting one thing to another, you're getting multiple steps. You can clean the data and move it here and add it to a database and then you can send part of it to Twitter and part of it to Ghost and like you can really start building some intense um, workflows. Okay, so let's get into the price. So this is where software as a service always screws you. Is It's always so expensive. But the thing is, they have a desktop version, which is just as good as the cloud version so far. I haven't played with it too much, but the cloud version, you have to pay $20 a month. So when I signed up for an Aten, I had to put out my credit card, um, which I will be canceling at some point, but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like and play around with it before I filmed this. Um, so they, you know, it's pretty standard. This is pretty much in the same ballpark as Zapier or um, make.com, but they do have a desktop version. So if you get the desktop app, which I downloaded here, you can do pretty much the same stuff, all the templates that we just looked at right here. And so I just find it like, dang, you could do all this for free. Just a little bit of API knowledge and a little bit of developer knowledge, and you can do everything Zapier can do and make.com 
but for free. So if you're willing to learn a little bit of code, a little bit of developer knowledge, you can really do some cool stuff. Now I do like to go over a couple different alternatives because not everyone knows API knowledge or developer knowledge. So some of the easier ones to learn, the first one is make.com. Super simple. You don't have to do any of the API stuff. You just have to log into your account with your username and password and it will pull the API information for you. You don't see any of that JSON, any of that developer knowledge. So I highly recommend that one. You do get, you only get two automations for free until you have to start paying. The second alternative is actually this company called Zapier. So you heard me say Zapier, make.com. Okay, so Zapier, they call them zaps. Um, make.com, they call them scenarios. Um, so just there's language barriers between them, but Zapier also, you get up to five automations for free, which is very cool, but they, they charge you more than make.com when you start to get into like the tens or twenties of you know, automations. The third alternative is called Power Automate. Now I like Power Automate because it is a Microsoft product. So if you work with a lot of Microsoft applications like Outlook and OneDrive and Teams and all those things at work, I recommend taking a crash course in Power Automate because you can automate stuff at work. So that's less personal side hustle stuff, but very much work related. If you're interested in seeing more in depth videos of the other software or even more on Inaten, I will link all of it up here and down below, all the ones that I filmed, because I like to go in depth tutorial style, kind of like what we did here, where I show you the differences, talk a little bit about the software and if it's worth to buy. 